Peace, everybody. Peace, sis. We are live. I'm back talking to you again about fertility and some tips, some ways that you can improve your fertility, that you can optimize your fertility in order to conceive, to have a baby, or and or <laughs> to get rid of your fertility challenges or to address them, to acknowledge them and to be able to deal with them and address them as needed. So what are we talking about today? Today we are talking about why you should consider using roses for fertility for fibroids. So if you have fibroids and if you are trying to conceive naturally, you might want to consider using roses. And I'm going to give you some reasons why you want to use the lovely rose, okay? I love roses, okay? Roses are something that I look for whenever I am out and about in nature. Because as you know, if you watch my videos, I like to forage. I like to literally go out into the forest. I like to go out into the wild. And I like to look for wild plants and wild herbs. Now, I'll be honest, it's not always easy to find roses. I've seen some. And I do have some pictures, which I will uh, try to upload once this video is done. But roses are something that you might want to start keeping your eye out for, especially if you have fibroids. And also if you have things like uh, heavy bleeding, excessive menstrual bleeding, and so forth. And I'm going to tell you why that is. Okay, you're probably seeing some smoke. It's coming from a little chimney. But... Roses are very good for fibroids, very good for fertility because roses are astringent, okay, and they're also decongestion. So what that means is that as an astringent herb, roses help to, to cause the, the cells in your skin in, to contract or the cells in your tissue to contract. And that helps to control how much blood is flowing. It also helps to sort of reduce the blood flow, blood loss, okay? It's not gonna completely stop it. At least a rose is not. It's not as strong as an astringent, as, um, it's not as, as strong and astring as an astringent as other herbs. Like for example, the goldenrod directly behind me is a much more powerful astringent. So if you needed something stronger, you would use goldenrod. But rose is a milder astringent herb, right? So it's very good, very gentle, especially when you're dealing with the womb. You don't want something too strong. And I'm not saying goldenrod is too strong, depending on what you're dealing with. But rose is great. Okay, rose can help you with fibroids. Rose is also a decongestion herb, right? And decongestions help with swelling. So as you may know, if you have fibroids, depending on where you're at in your cycle, your fibroids, your uterus, your womb, they can swell. It can cause inflammation. It can cause swelling. This can be uncomfortable. It can be painful. Um, you know, and especially if you have like pedunculated fibroids, the ones that hang from the stalk, and there is some tugging and some pulling, that can cause more swelling, more pain. And so rose is definitely a good herb or, you know, it's, it's considered a herb when you are dealing with sort of natural healing, it's considered a herb. So rose is good for that, right? Some other things rose is really good for, especially if you are trying to conceive and you have fibroids, is to sort of, it's not even to sort of, it's to regulate your menstrual bleeding, as I've mentioned before, but I just want to go a little deeper than that. Rose helps if you have heavy bleeding, okay? Because like I've mentioned, it's an astringent. So it's going to sort of minimize the excessive bleeding, okay? And if you have fibroids, you may know that fibroids can cause you to bleed a lot. It can literally cause anemia, and anemia can cause death, right? So you don't want you are dealing with your fibroids as best as you can, okay? And you don't need to have a hysterectomy when you have fibroids. Of course, you want to discuss this with your own healthcare provider or, you know, consult your, you know, higher goddess, as I like to say. But <clears throat> rose can help to regulate the heavy bleeding that you, you are experiencing. So if you are experiencing heavy 
menstrual bleeding consider that rose is also good if you have irregular bleeding so say you are spotting outside of your menstrual cycle say you are actually bleeding outside of your menstrual cycle consuming rose in like a tea or even massaging it on your womb maybe when you're doing your castor oil packs and things like that rose can help to again regulate irregular menstrual cycles so you definitely want to incorporate rose into your skincare, into your self-care, into your, again, therapeutic care. Whatever you're doing for fibroids, you may want to consider that. Because rose is actually really, really good for your skin as well. Rose can help to minimize wrinkles. Rose can help to rejuvenate your skin and bring it back closer to, you know, your, your glowing youth and so forth. It's very revitalizing for the skin and for the body so as an oil as an infused oil you definitely want to consider it if, especially if you're doing things like castor oil packs for your fertility right you don't just have to use just plain old castor oil you can essential oils or rose essential oil into it so another thing that again rose is very good for is if you have painful periods okay so again as an astringent and as a decongestant rose can minimize the pain that you are experiencing while you are having your period or while you are uh you know experiencing pain caused by fibroids because again some people some women are out here suffering you may be suffering sis if you are suffering and you are watching this video and uh you have fibroids you might want to consider getting some rose now it can also be good for other things that cause pain swelling and menstrual issues um just make sure that you are looking into whether it's good for exactly what you have okay so you're asking a question anita money you say can you heal and conceive after cervical biopsy and negative results no cancer and is this a cervical biopsy for fibroids or for um cervical you know how they cervical cancer or whatever but you said no cancer um and you're asking can you heal so the, the biopsy does that mean that they cut they cut um out of your womb because rose uh is it rose wild yam is actually good for post-surgery so you might want to look up wild yam for uh wild yam is good for pelvic pain and uh, post pelvic pain surgery or just post pelvic surgery wild yam is also good for that um but you in mo i mean if you're you alive if you're alive, you can heal, okay? So I need more clarity, too, on what it is that you're asking me, um, exactly what it is that you can heal. Can you heal your womb, right? So please, if you're still listening, make sure that you sort of clarify that a little bit. Um, but if you're asking me if you can conceive after they have removed either a fiber, right? If you're, I mean, you're lucky that they didn't remove your womb, so, um, you know, most cases where they are removing things from women's wombs in, for fibroids, when you remove a fibroid, the womb, they can stitch it back intact where you can conceive. Women have gone on to conceive naturally. That is why people, that is why women, they opt for things like myomectomy or they opt for things that are going to keep the womb intact. So it depends on what type of surgery that you had, right? What exactly did they do? Okay, so, but from what I, I think a cervical biopsy is um, where they just take, like, I'm wondering if that's just samples. I, I can't remember exactly what the word biopsy means, so I need you to clarify that for me if you can, sis, right? <clears throat> but, um, so, yeah, roses, again, is good for painful periods, right? So, again, if you have a painful period, definitely consider using rose for that but like you said you have um you, it seems like you you did have some type of surgery i would definitely look into that wild yam and if you want you can also book a call with me so i could actually go in more i don't know if you maybe don't want to talk about all of that right here on this live but um you can schedule a call with me by going to one of my websites go to blackfertilitysecrets.wordpress.com slash book and I will put the link in the description. It's actually in my Facebook Live right now. You can just go to my, um, sorry, not my Facebook Live. It's actually in my um, Black Fertility 
fan page. So if you go to my fan page, my like page, whatever they're calling it now, is there's actually a book now button. So yeah, I thought it was a test. It was a test on the cervix. They take a small piece of tissue and run a test. Yes, just a sample of tissue. Okay, so that's not they didn't really do anything you know that's just um some tissue that they scraped off the the outer layer of your skin they may have taken like a you know a certain amount of milliliters or you know but um and was this test for abnormal um abnormal uh what do they call it abnormal um cells in your cervix because i've done that before with i've done the whole biopsy and then they try to do a col col coloscopy um i think that's the next step where they try to verify what their findings are but if that's what it is i've healed from that if you're talking about abnormal cervical cells i've definitely gone through all of that where they told me my cervical cells are abnormal this could cause um it could be HPV or it could cause HPV and this could lead to cervical cancer. And they wanted to, um, to laser the cells out of my womb to use a laser and or to cut them and, and burn them. I had three options and I re I told them, no, I was very young at the time. I told them no. And I walked up out of that place. And it was interesting. Like I've, I've said in my videos, as soon as I walked out, there were some pamphlets on the wall. And I took a couple of them. One of them caught my eye, and basically it was saying that you could um, restore the cells in your uterus that are considered abnormal that could be uh, lead to cervical cancer by eating a healthy diet of you know rich in fruits and vegetables and you know exercise and water. And I did all that. That's how I ended up becoming vegetarian. And a few months after that, I went back and they told me that my cells were normal. And um, actually, I think I just, I also found that out. Can you just stay here for a second? I also found out too that they were like, every time I had a baby and they would do the test to make sure everything is good, the the, um, the pap smear, every time I had a baby, I was always, always nervous about it. So I would always definitely do the pap smear until maybe my fourth pregnancy. But every test was coming back, you're clear, you're clear, you're clear, you're good, you're good, you're good. Because I was really scared that they, you know, they were telling me, ooh, I was gonna have um, HPV or I was going to have cervical cancer. So I was really scared that this stuff, and you know, when you look at the, the word HPV virus or whatever, or cancer, they tell you this stuff doesn't go away and there's nothing you can do about it. So I was belief for years until finally I was like, okay, these tests keep coming back clear. Whatever they were telling me, it wasn't true. I, I did a little thing I read in a pamphlet. I went vegan, vegetarian, more healthy. I, I drank more water. I, you know, I, I performed exercises and so forth. And so I have not had that problem. I, um, you know, I had several babies after that. So you can definitely heal from things, which is what I'm guessing that they told you that you may have that if you want to again talk to me go to my website at blackfertilitysecrets.wordpress.com slash book um i know it's a lot but if you just go to my fan page or my like page black fertility you can just click the book button and it'll take you directly where you can book a free consultation with me for 15 minutes right so i just want to finish talking about the rose because it's really really such a good herb and i actually have some rose and um i've shown it in previous videos that I've done on Instagram but the rose that you will pick from that you will pick from the rose bush it look it's going to look a little different from the rose that you will maybe order offline or buy from store from a store or get in a yoni steam pack when I pick rose and I let it dry by itself it's not going to maintain the color right so it's going to look a little more rusty a little bit but listen the rose is still very good right so you want to make sure that if you if you still have roses on your rose bushes um make sure that you use it and if you don't have rose bushes or sorry if you don't still have roses on your rose bushes you can still use the rose hip okay so the rose hip is the fruit of the rose and you can actually use the rose hip as though you were using rose right so and it's very high in vitamin c the rose hips so the rose hips, they just look like the little rose, but they actually, you know, it actually looks like um, a, a fruit, like an orangish, reddish type of fruit. So make sure that you don't discard that. There there should be a lot of rose right now because I know that at um, 
another location where I go to harvest um, some plants, there was a lot of orange rose hips. Okay, so definitely start collecting your rose hips and you can use them in yoni seed, you can use them in tea, you can make your little skincare products with them by infusing it in oil and letting it sit in the sun. It's not a lot of sun, you know, it's getting colder, but you can you can do that as well. Or, you know, there are a lot of recipes and remedies and ways. And again, if you have fibroids, you can add it to your yoni steam. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And I also want to let you know that if you would like to get some yoni seams from me with rose i am formula i have formulated three separate rose yoni steams or three separate yoni steams for fibroids and i am taking pre-orders now so if you would like to get yours these are exclusive yoni steams they are designed and formulated specifically for women with fibroids that are trying to conceive naturally okay so these yoni steams they are going to be con they're going to con that are all meant to help with fibroids to help to dissolve break up loosen shrink reduce eliminate fibroids naturally okay because again they have properties such as being astringent such as being decongestion, and they're going to help with other things. Rose so happens to be one that is decongestant and astringent. Okay, wild yam is also good for fibroids, and so I'm going to have all of that. So if you're interested in yoni steaming, make sure that you go to my website, nataciawinter.com slash order dash yoni steams. Okay, so the yoni steams is all one word. You can see that in the description. So I really would appreciate if you could do that now while you're watching this video. Just click on NataciaWinter.com slash order yoni steams. And you can go and you can learn more about the three yoni steam packs that I have created specifically for you. Okay, if you have fibroids and if you're trying to increase your fertility naturally. Now, of course, these yoni steams are not, you know, you don't have to have four fibroids to use them. I will be using these yoni steam herbs and I'll no longer have uh, fibroids or I don't, I didn't have a fibroid in my uterus, but I did have one in my breast and I was able to successfully shrink that fibroid. You know, fibroids to me is really something that like, it really sort of, I resonate with it and with women that have fibroids. So I am doing that. These are going to be, again, herbs that are not going to be found in your regular Yoni Steam packs that cost $8. They're not going to be found in your regular Yoni Steam that you see online on Instagram or anywhere out there. These are going to, again, be formulated with herbal remedies and Reiki healing specifically for you with fibroids. So what that means is... I am going to be infusing these yoni steams again with healing oils such as possibly rose oil or some other oils that are good for fibroids and I am going to be letting it infuse and create synergies and bonds that you know amplify the healing potential of these oils and also doing Reiki or chakra work on these herbs crystals and solar energy and lunar energy so it is taking me some time to again infuse these herbs okay so that way i'm not just opening it up out of a pack mixing it up together and then shipping it out to you i'm really putting you know that healing energy positive affirmations and allowing that to really magnify so that you can get the most optimized healing power out of not just the properties of the herbs, but also, again, the energy from, again, being out here in nature, from the Reiki and the chakra healing work that I'm putting into it and my manifestations and affirmations, okay, that's herbs to help to heal you on a more deep I hope this video reaches you well, and I really hope that you all the, the healing powers and healing properties of rose. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please pre-order your herbs at nataciawinter.com slash order dash yoni steams. Yoni steams is all one word. Thank you so much. And if you would like to book a call with me, again, you can also go to nataciawinter.com slash book or blackfertility.wordpress.com slash book. So thank you and take care. Bye.